What's going on, survivors? If you guys are thinking about braving the harsh deserts of Scorched Earth when it officially launches here for Ark Survival Ascended, well, then you guys better prep yourselves. Because this is definitely one hellish map that is going to push your survival skills to the absolute limit. Now, I'll be the first to admit it. Scorched Earth is very unforgiving compared to a lot of the other maps for Ark Survival. But you want to know one thing? That's why I love this map so much, is because it basically doesn't hold your hand whatsoever it strips everything back to like bare bone survival and it really tests your survival skills and your ingenuity if you will to just simply survive on the map and now with the new dlc release on the horizon i basically wanted to jump in here and share some crucial tips that will hopefully help you guys stay alive long enough to get established in this scorching hellscape so diving right in for starters i would focus on taming a jerboa right off the bat as soon as you possibly can these little guys will ride on your shoulder and these little guys can carry a ton of weight when loaded into their inventory just like other shoulder mounts it's basically like a little portable pack mule that you could utilize to your advantage if you're in a pinch and need to carry some extra weight but even more importantly they actually will warn you about the incoming weather events with unique sounds and animations and speaking on weather here be prepared for some really nasty new conditions rotating through you have sandstorms which will drain your stamina and make it hard for you to see if you're not wearing desert goggles which is a new clothing item or armor that you can craft on scorched earth you have electrical storms that will knock out any generators that you have created and in fact i believe generators in general just decayed over time on the scorched earth map simply due to the heat so keeping that in mind i would actually focus more on creating a turbine farm instead this is going to be again a brand new engram that will be on the scorched earth map and this will give you the ability to actually use wind to generate power instead of relying on gasoline in a jenny i would recommend as early as possible scouting out areas with very high wind percentages so then that way when you do get prepared and ready to start your wind turbine farm you're already in the desired location now i'm not exactly sure what the key binding will be for arc survival ascended at the time of recording this video but based on how what it was in arc survival evolved if you actually press and hold the h key on your keyboard in the desired base location beside the temperature stat you will actually see a w percent and then a number what you're looking for is actually an 80 percent or higher for a really good wind farm again this is the recommended method for generating power on the scorched earth map because just generators in general do not work well on here and they're really not optimal and now one thing that i cannot stress to you enough and that relates to building yourself a little hut and making sure you have a roof above your head to get out of the sun this is very very important because in scorched earth you are going to constantly be overheating and by not being able to get away from the sun or out of the sun it will inevitably cause you to have like extreme heat exhaustion which will do damage to your character and not only that make you consume a lot more water which again is going to eventually create de dehydration and then you'll be taking additional damage there overall it's very very harsh so build yourself a little hut as quickly as you possibly can so you have a place to go to get out of the sun from time to time additionally it's important to note of all the building sets available it's actually the adobe set which is going to be exclusive here to scorched earth map when it drops is actually the best for insulation against hot things and cold things and additionally once you do have all the basics covered here i would strongly recommend that you scour the map and kill any moths that you happen to see to collect yourself a handsome amount of sill this is going to be used to craft the brand new tent engram that you will unlock on this map this tent will depreciate over time the more that you constantly deploy it it will inevitably use up its durability but it does do a very good job at providing protection against heat and cold elements on the map and it can be picked up and deployed whenever you see fit as long as you have the durability to do so now next up a really good thing i would advise every player to do and that is pick yourself up a raptor to help you get around the hostile landscapes on the scorched earth map you will find pretty much almost in every single spawn point even though it's labeled easy having dinos that will inevitably try to kill you everything from terror birds to dire wolves you've got saber cats raptors you name it no matter where you spawn you are just simply not safe and you will often find yourself just immediately getting attacked and probably going to die and have to respawn several times so with that being said i would really advise utilizing bolas to your advantage and boomerangs to knock out a raptor or a pack of raptors right off the bat use some of the leveling points into weight 
weight and movement speed to make it a very good beacon running tool. And speaking of tools, that does bring us into the new Boomerang. The Boomerang is going to be another brand new engram that we'll uncover here for the Scorched Earth map. And Boomerangs are very versatile. They have two different attack modes. The left click on the mouse will actually be a melee attack that does do torpor damage. And the right click will allow you to toss them and throw them like a ranged weapon that will return after striking and will also cause torpor damage. It's basically like the club from the island map just on steroids. And now in addition to the Raptor, I would also advise players to definitely get and tame or Morella tops as soon as possible. These walking tanks can gather just about every single resource. They have crazy high amount of weight so you can carry tons of stuff. They can give you water from their pouch and it even has a protective stomp attack that will shoo off predators. These guys definitely move slower than the Raptor mount, but in general, these are very handy to have with you at all times as they do provide all of those benefits I just listed. But the main source one here is actually going to be the walking water supply. It will allow you to then simply drink from it from time to time. You can fill up your canteens from the pouch and you are also able to refill them at random water sources that you find around the map. And now talking about taming, let's discuss some ways that you can tame the new creatures that we'll discover on the Scorched Earth map. The very first one brings us to Jerboas, the shoulder mount pet that I talked about at the beginning of the video. There's actually going to be a plant called Plant Species Y. It's going to be very similar to Plant Species X that we had from like the island map. But in general, you're going to find these plants just gathered throughout the map. Go ahead and harvest some of these seeds, and then you can use those seeds to tame one of their Jerboas because, again, they are very important. Additionally, here, the Death Worm spines are going to be needed in order for you guys to tame the Deadly Mantis that you will see scoured out throughout the desert areas. Now, again, these guys are brutal. They can jump from a far distance here. They can use both weapons in their hand if you happen to tame one. They provide just a crazy amount of chitin for resources and organic polymer when you kill them. But in general, if you guys are looking to tame them, you unfortunately got to kill these crazy big death worms that are also in the desert areas and collect these spines. Next up, let's talk about the wyverns, aka dragons on the Scorched Earth map. This again has a very unique taming method as you cannot tame any of the adult wyverns you will discover. Instead, what you actually have to do is make your way through what they call the scar, at least on Ark Survival Evolved, and you have to find the little pockets in the walls where they have nest and they will have an egg. Now, not every nest will have an egg, unfortunately, but once you discover there is an egg, you need to make your way to that egg and then just simply pick it up. Now, keep in mind, though, you need to haul ass as soon as you pick it up because when you pick it up, every single wyvern that is an adult in that area will be aggroed and know your exact location. So you need to make it out of there as fast as you possibly can. Try to dodge and weave, you know, the adult wyverns if you happen to see some or simply just lose their aggro by not stopping. Do not stop after you steal an egg. From there, you could just simply hatch the egg with utilizing ACs or any other method you see fit, whether that's just adding fire to increase the temperature or, you know, waiting until it gets colder at nighttime to decrease it. And last but not least, when it comes to new creatures, let's talk about the rock golems, which unfortunately you are going to need a ballista or a cannon in order for you to knock them out because these simple torpor taming methods do not work. And additionally, they do take rocks and sulfur in order for you guys to tame them effectively. But overall, you cannot knock them out any other method besides the catapult and the cannon in order for you to start the taming process. Now, diving into some rapid fire here at the end of the video, I want to just cover additional survival tips that are very, very handy to know. That is number one, drink from the blue jug bugs that you will find just flying around the entire map. You don't have to kill these in order to drink from them. You can actually get close enough to them when you see their backs are super big and swollen you can actually just interact on them and drink directly from them they will kind of you know get scared and fly away from you but in general this is a very easy way to get some water in a pinch additionally it's worth mentioning that the whip that you will learn again this is a new engram for the scorched earth map but utilizing the whip for various activities one you could use it to just simply harvest a lot of plants including silk plants from the ground it's a very good source for that additionally it's easy to lead around or move your dinosaurs by smacking them or an, or last but not least you can actually quickly stun an aggressive mob that is coming towards you next you want to make sure you're stocking up on preserving salts in order for you guys to keep harvest meat from spoiling really fast meat on the scorched earth map does tend to spoil a lot faster compared to other maps so the preserving
preserving bin and preserving salt becomes very important mgrams as they will allow you to extend the life of your meats that you gather and farm additionally at the beginning of the game it's worth keeping your eye out for green drops as these actually do have some of those adobe building supplies already in them without you having to craft them and as i mentioned before the adobe is the best when it comes to providing cold and heat protection on the scorched earth map same thing goes for farming the silica pearls because there are an abundance of them around the red obelisk at least at the current map for arc survival evolved again this could be changed here for arc survival ascended so just take it with a grain of salt but simply you can find tons of silica pearls in certain areas and last but not least tip i'll offer for you and that is just simply do not whatsoever build your base or anything of value that you want to keep around in the desert areas the desert areas and even on the edge of the desert the death worms have the ability to destroy anything there including full-on bases so i would not recommend building there and instead will build more inland away from the desert in more safer areas if you will if there's grass that can be grown there typically that's a safe area and a safe bed but definitely do not risk it building a large giant base or something that you do not want to get destroyed by placing it in the desert. At the end of the day, when it comes to surviving on Scorcher Earth, it's all about knowing what tools you have at your disposal and strategizing creative uses for every little resource that you get your hands on. It's an absolutely brutal map, but that's what makes mastering it feel so good and rewarding. Every single day that you wake up alive in this blistering embrace is a feat of sheer will and integrity. And that, my friends, is a few tips and tricks that I will offer you guys to hopefully increase your chances of survival here diving into Scorch Earth for the very first time. As I've mentioned a few times in the video, all of this stuff is based on my knowledge from the Scorched Earth of Ark Survival Evolved and obviously all of this stuff could be changed here diving into Ark Survival Ascended, so just simply take it with a grain of salt. If the game does officially drop this DLC on April 1st as it's intended to and things are different, obviously let me know down below in the comment section, but in general, this is going to be some really good tips to hopefully give you guys a leg up when it does officially drop as always guys if you like the tips or if you have any additional tips or anything to add to this list drop them down below in the comment section for myself and other players as they could greatly benefit from that diving into a new dlc don't forget to like comment and subscribe here on the channel for everything arc survival ascended related don't forget that i will be hosting a scorched earth private pve community server that i will be clustering with the island map server that I currently host and if you guys are interested in checking all of that out you can do so by utilizing the links down below in the description with that being said though guys as always you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you all on the next one